Today, let's see this sci-fi barrier in Unreal. Very commonly used to protect players or for a force field of some kind. And today, I'm gonna show you a simple version of this. As usual, we made quite a few variations and they are all available on the marketplace or on my Patreon's page. As a matter of fact, this is actually part of this huge sci-fi pack. Links below. So, let's jump right into this. Alright, so let's begin by creating a new Niagara system. We right click, in effects, an empty system that we can rename to NES underscore sci-fi barrier. In here we right click, we can add an empty emitter and rename it to mesh. It's gonna be the mesh for the barrier essentially. Which means down here on the render, we can replace the sprite render with a mesh render, so we can emit meshes. And in here I'm gonna assign this mesh right here, which essentially comes from this tutorial, the exact same mesh where I used Blender to create the barrier. I left a link below, it's for Unity, but what matters is the mesh itself. Once you have the mesh, what really matters now is that we go to the emitter update and use a spawn burst instantaneous, so we can emit one particle. And here we go, we have the mesh. Now down here, we want to enable material override, add a new material, and this is where we are going to need to create a new material essentially. So on the folder, with right click, I'm going to create a new material and call it the M underscore barrier material, for example. Open it up. And the first thing we want to say is that the blend mode is additive. From there, we need a texture sampler to D for our main text. And in here, I'm going to use this dots texture, which essentially I made on Material Maker. It's very easy and very straightforward, and I highly recommend you to use Material Maker to create texture. And once you have downloaded it, which is available on each.io, you can open it up, and this is Material Maker. I already have some nodes here, but Essentially what we want to do is search for a pattern. Generic, yes indeed. With this pattern right here, we want to increase the X and Y tiling, like 16 by 16 for example. And that's essentially it. Now all we got to do is remove the black background. And the way we do it is with a colorized node. The first key, which is black, should also be with alpha at zero. As you can see now black is completely transparent and that's going to be useful for us for our sci-fi barrier. Between these two, if you don't want these dots to be round, you can use a step node. By the way, every time you select a node, you can preview what it is doing, right? And in this case, the value, if it's smaller, the dots are going to be bigger and the wide will control how smooth they are, by the way. Replace the connection to colorize and with the colorize node selected now on this preview to the window, we right click, we can go to export and select for example 2048 by 2048 and then you can export this directly to your project, call it the dots one text or something like that, export as a PNG, yes indeed. Alright, so now that we have our texture, the dots text, we can assign it here and we want to connect the RGB to the emissive color and here we go, this is what we have at this stage. Now there's a couple ways of doing this, but I like to use a dynamic parameter node to control the texture tiling on the X and on the Y, so we can adjust it to the barrier. And for this to work, we need to join the X and Y, we are going to use an append node, and then we need the texture coordinates, essentially the UVs. If we multiply these two together and connect these two UVs of the main texture, on the dynamic parameter, now we can control the tiling of this texture, as you can see. I'm gonna leave it at 1 and 1. Looking good. Now, let's copy all of this. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. I'm gonna rename this to the noise text, so we can kind of break that pattern, you see? And I'm gonna use this noise texture right here. Which, by the way, you can create a very similar one in Material Maker as well. Essentially, I began with searching for noise and using the FBM noise, there's plenty of noise by the way, and increasing the scale to 8 in the X and in the Y. And then I use the tones to control how much black or whites I want, right? I don't want that many blacks by the way. And that's essentially it. Now I simply exported this texture as a PNG to the project. Alright, so now that we have this noise texture, we can connect this to the emissive color. I just want to show you that the dynamic parameter node should have the parameter index set to 1. It's very important. 
and let's just rename this to noise text styling x and y and now we want to use these two parameters down here for the noise text speed in the x and the noise text speed in the y and for these two new parameters we are going to need the time note let me push this all the way back and we are going to create two multiply nodes while holding m and then clicking with left mouse button and then speed x goes to this b right here and speed y goes to the b right here once again the way this works is that we need to join them and we are going to use an append many or an append would work as well and we want to add this rg to the tiling just like this and then replace this connection to the uvs of the noise text and here we go it's already moving because by default speed x and speed y is set to 1. now how do we join all of this together we can do it right here with a multiply node by multiplying the main text with the noise text and then replacing the connection to the emission and here we go it's just a nice trick to break the dots pattern essentially it will add a really nice touch another fantastic detail that we can add is a glowing border to our barrier so let's create a new parameter 2d and call it the border text and this time we are going to use this text right here which again all i did was follow this tutorial essentially we extracted the uvs and then painted the border in crete or in photoshop you can do the same and then once you have this texture let me just connect this to the emissive color so you can see what's happening what we want to do is create a constant vector 4 convert it to a parameter and call it the border color and if we multiply these two together we replace this connection to the emissive and for example choose an orange color like 5 for the r 0 0.85 for the g and 0 0.5 for the b we get this nice orange glowing right now how do we add this to the rest of what we have here well first we need to subtract the border exactly like this as you can see now the border is gone from that equation and then we need to re-add it again but first what we can do is copy this border color call it the well the center color for example and switch it to a blue color and then multiply these two together with all of this done now we can re-add the border with its own color and as soon as we do it and replace the emissive color connection here we go this is how it's looking now i'm just going to create a material instance because i like to use instance instead of the original material and on the barrier itself on the niagara system on the mesh renderer i'm going to use it right here and here we go as you can see the dots are stretched so on the particle update or on the particle spawn the update will keep on updating these values by the way we want to say that the main text styling is 1.6 for the x and 1 for the y at least i found these values to work better looks rounder and now yeah the noise styling can be 1 for the x and 1 for the y and the speed something like 0.2 for the y will add a nice touch as you can see obviously the blue is with too much saturation but you get the idea now a cool thing we can do is for example control its size right here on the initialized particle that's why it's useful to use the Niagara system you could do that here or if you want to animate this on the particle update you could use a scale mesh size where for example you can make a vector from this that's the name but essentially it will separate each axis and now we can say the z is controlled by a curve let me just say the x and y is 1 and you can create an interesting motion with only the z where you say that the first and last key are zero but then you add a key more or less around here with a value of 1.2 so it grows really fast in the beginning like boing and then you can add another key at 0 0.1 and more or less near the end at 0 0.95 you can say it's still one by the way let's select everything and with right click say it's auto so it becomes smoother and then you can obviously adjust these handles however you want but essentially this is the motion you get by playing with the z axis as you can see it's really cool you can do this in the x or in the y axis and see how it looks for example i'm going to copy this z curve let me just convert x to a curve and then paste it right here and now i'm going to select these three keys press f to focus on them and i'm gonna push them a little bit to the front offset them 
I'm gonna copy this and paste it on the Y, but first I need to convert this to a curve. And here we go. We get a very interesting motion just by playing with these curves, and you can obviously try different feelings and different colors. Once again, this is all part of the sci-fi pack that I made available on the marketplace and on my Patreon's page. It's a great sci-fi collection, links below. By supporting me on the Patreon page, you get access to plenty more assets that you can use in your games. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month, and as usual, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Alberto Sajeres, Alexei, Alan Alstad, Andre Ripa, Javier Tobali, Ben Basso, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, David Molina, Diego Marcos, Lua Alma, Frosty40, Grub Lab, Ingward Popper, Ivan Jacobi, Jared Billy, Jelly Mesh, Jonathan Carlson, Casey Miller, Lee and Old, Matt Morn, Mike Bell, Nathan Peckenpach, Obreon, Oitsk, Pierre Mayoru, Pradip San, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Ray Rouen, RVR, Sean Aguilar, Studio Prema, Tiag Paiva, Team. Barry Suta, Whatever Marta, Will Polian, Zuru, Virginia Seru, Dong Mao Dong, Shang Pyong Ling, Min Jae Kim, and Sang Kyung Go. Thank you all very much for your support, and I hope to see you all on the next one. Thank you. Bye.